My name is Aisha Tekesh and I'm an assistant professor of mechanical engineering in the Southern Polytechnic College of Engineering and Engineering Technology. I have always been interested in the design, modeling and control of compliant, in other words, flexible mechanisms within the focus of my PhD program. And during my time as a postdoctoral researcher at the Georgia Institute of Technology, I developed mathematical models of capacitive micromachined ultrasonic transducers, considered the breakthrough ultrasound technology. My current research interest in small-scale lab equipment designed for dynamics, vibrations, and control labs stemmed from a 2017 IEEE American Control Conference, a highly prestigious international conference in the area of controls. During an invited session, there was a discussion about the need to develop low-cost laboratory equipment for control theory courses. This was also an issue for vibrations courses and the associated labs since students usually struggle with complex equations and connecting the theories to the real-world applications. I recognize that portable lab kits for these hands-on experiences could greatly improve learning if the students were able to take the lab equipment home to complete experiments on their own time. In dynamics, vibrations, and introductory control theory courses, undergraduate engineering students learn to develop and use mathematical models of mechanical, electrical, and electromechanical systems. To better understand the fundamentals of vibrations and control theory, students need to establish a solid foundation in dynamics, which studies the motion of these systems and mechanisms as they respond to various conditions. In engineering, these three courses are taught along with the associated labs. However, currently available standard educational systems used to demonstrate vibrations and control concepts are often limited. They are costly, few in number, and require substantial physical space. For these reasons, most students do not get a chance to spend enough time on the hands-on part of a lab. Although an increase in lab time could be a solution, common obstacles may arise such as the lack of extra time due to the student's other time commitments, the lack of equipment access during nights and weekends, or the lack of class offerings that would include enrolling in theory lecture courses and applied lab courses during the same semester. We want to change that. My name is Dr. Tris Uchig, and I am an Associate Professor of Nuclear Engineering in the Southern Polytechnic College of Engineering and Engineering Technology. In graduate school, I was a nuclear engineer expecting to apply my research at a national lab designing fusion reactors. However, after earning my master's degree, my plans changed dramatically. I joined the Peace Corps, in which I was assigned as a high school math and science teacher in Ghana. From that unique experience, I found that I also loved teaching. The more I learned about educational research and best teaching practices, the more motivated I became to advance and apply that research to the engineering curriculum. While I still teach nuclear and mechanical engineering courses, most of my work now involves supporting faculty to incorporate research on teaching and learning within their engineering classrooms. I do that through my full-time role as Director for Scholarly Teaching in the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. I conduct engineering education research, exploring the frontiers of student learning. I seek new ways to help students not only to learn the content, but to connect it to the real world and develop the same learning and professional practices used by engineers out in the workforce. I established my own research team, the Dynamics and Control Research Group, in spring 2017 with an aim to design compliant mechanisms and portable lab equipment. When Tris joined the Mechanical Engineering Department, I was happy to learn that his work fits well with the goals I had for the student-designed 3D printed portable lab equipment for dynamics, vibrations, and control theory courses and their associated laboratories. So I asked him for a meeting, and at first, we started talking about how to turn the student-designed research projects I was supervising into an educational journal publication. Yes, so as it turned out, our interests aligned perfectly. The research that ICE was doing had amazing potential for use in the lab, in the classroom, and even for individual students working at home. The research I am interested in connects that hands-on work in building up students' engineering professional skills while also fostering deep learning. Together, ICE and I bring expertise forming a complete set of research knowledge for use of these devices in support of undergraduate learning. It starts with students designing and building 3D printed devices in ICE's design group. Next, we translate the physical behavior of those devices into carefully designed learning activities connecting to the theory in class or lab. And then, when students complete the learning activities connected to each device, 
They build real-world engineering skills based on some of the most complex, conceptual, and highly mathematical content in the mechanical engineering curriculum. Teaching abstract mechanical engineering theories using student design 3D printed lab equipments encompasses a technical research approach embedded within an educational research environment. While the overarching goal involves educational research to improve undergraduate education in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, our educational innovation utilizes engineering hands-on equipment that students will design through a technical engineering research process. We have a five-pronged approach to this process. First, the developed mechanisms are low-cost, lightweighted, and compact, since they are 3D printed using thermoplastic polyurethane, polylactic acid, polyethylene terephthalate glycol filaments. Since the model is created using CAD software and posted online, anyone can download the CAD model to 3D print a specific device using a low-cost home-based 3D printer. Second, the idea of using compliant or flexible mechanisms is catching on. Traditionally, when engineers design a mechanism, they prefer rigid parts connected with hinges or sliding joints. But when we look at nature, we see an entirely different idea. Moving things in nature are very flexible instead of stiff, and the motion or displacement comes from bending. We see in nature the possibility of making devices or machines that are very compact, even with their own control and energy harvesting systems. And third, the mechanisms can be used in several courses. Fourth, students teaching students is part of what makes this research so relevant. In 2018, the students in ICE's design group produced several devices for demonstration in class. I worked with ICE to design the learning activities, and in class, the design group students were there to assist students in operating the devices, manipulating them to change their vibratory behavior, and interpreting the data produced by the sensors. We then collected data showing the impact these activities had on student learning and saw encouraging results. As students working in the design lab bring their work directly into the classroom, they make the content come alive in the courses we are trying to impact. No longer are students simply doing the math to analyze a theoretical system. The activities students lead and participate in are designed to be active, hands-on, and process-oriented, which research demonstrates can increase student learning, increase student motivation, and increase self-efficacy and identity as engineers. In short, what we are trying to do is to prepare students to graduate from KSU with all the skills needed for their professional jobs. We are studying the impact of how strongly students develop certain characteristics expected of working engineers from utilizing our 3D printed lab equipment. And lastly, low-cost data acquisition is readily available through the use of our 3D printed lab equipment. The turnkey systems that are usually installed in lab spaces are purchased with integrated software and instrumentation ready to collect data, making it easy for the students. However, the students do not have the opportunity to develop a deep understanding of connecting sensors to the power source and data acquisition system. And, since these turnkey systems are not designed for use in classroom demonstrations or for short, hands-on activities, opportunities for student learning through concrete, hands-on experience with the equipment is restricted to very basic manipulation or even to pure observation. With the coronavirus pandemic, the spring 2020 semester moved to online instruction leaving professors to quickly prepare for a virtual environment they were not anticipating. Whatever the circumstance, engineering labs still require plenty of hands-on learning. The usage of our 3D printed lab equipment is the ideal solution since it can be used in various environments. Students can perform lab work at home and get hands-on experience through the lab kits that can be mailed to their homes or picked from campus for usage at home. Through it all, my number one priority remains the same. My students, having engaged in research, will be better prepared for future careers both in industry and academia. Students are attracted to the project not only because of ICE's boundless enthusiasm, but also because they love working on these projects as they see their skills in critical thinking, problem solving, and engineering design are all elevated far beyond what one normally can achieve with traditional classroom learning. We hope to transform how faculty facilitate student learning of vibrations and controls content throughout the mechanical engineering curriculum, from well-designed learning activities in the classroom to hands-on experimentation in the lab, and even to studying at home.